Okay, today's uh, Kansas City Sports History Podcast is with uh, Kansas City Comets uh, goalie Alan Mayer. Alan, uh, do you have any uh, opening remarks for the Kansas City Sports History Group before we begin with questions? Well, I'm just uh, the biggest uh, remarks would be I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled that uh, I have the opportunity to tell a little bit about uh, soccer history here in Kansas City, and I'm pleased and I want to thank you right up front that uh, be able to get together and, and chat a little bit about the. Uh, some of the things we're going to talk here in the future about what's happened in the past, so it's going to be going to be a fun day. Great. Uh, tell us a little bit about where you grew up, your high school, and athletic experiences in school, and, and what sports you participated in. Um, I actually grew up in uh, Long Island, New York, uh, 62 years ago, uh, and uh, it, uh, was there all you know through high school and. Played uh, three sports in high school. I played uh, basketball. Basketball was my number one sport. That's the one I liked a, a lot. Uh, basketball in the in the uh, winter time, and then to get in shape for playing basketball, I had an opportunity to play f- uh, football or soccer. And I thought, hey, the best way to get in shape for uh, basketball is to you know get on a, get on a field and run around, and and uh, that way. And uh, so I chose soccer, and I played soccer in the f- uh, fall. Uh, basketball in the winter and then tennis in the uh, springtime and it was wonderful great you know it was a great variety and I know a lot of uh, current athletes nowadays they they specialize in one but I'm a firm believer uh, back then and even right now that it's 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 nice to have a little variety in your in your sports selection and uh, because you can take a little bit of every 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 sport out there and uh, develop a particular skill and make you uh, as an athlete uh, better uh, overall uh, if you, you can play multiple sports. And that's what I did in high school. I played the three sports. And from high school, I went uh, uh, I went down to Virginia uh, to play in, in, in college. And uh, 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 it was called Madison College at the time. Uh, played originally played uh, soccer there in the fall, and then. Uh, uh, tennis in, in the springtime. So it was a, a, again, I played two sports in, in, in college and, and it was wonderful. Uh, and uh, probably, you know, uh, everybody who goes to college, after, generally they, they love it and I'm no exceptions. Even, even I've been here at 62 years old, I can look back at my college days and say, oh, they were a lot of fun. Uh, learned a lot and, and, and had a good time and it was just a, a wonderful experience and uh, that's where I met my wife so we have a, a, a long standing uh, relationship and it, it was a, a great a great place to play. Uh, it was a beautiful place down in Harrison, uh, it was in Harrisonburg, Virginia uh, and located in the Shenandoah Mountain uh, Valley area and uh, uh, played soccer there and uh, I had had a great time. I was number one player on the tennis team. Played there for four years and uh, did a lot of the uh, 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 intramural sports uh, as well. So uh, sports was a big big part of my uh, my 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 stay at uh, Madison College. And that Madison is now called James Madison University. Um, and it was a, a a great time. And that's really where I uh, started my soccer career. Um, it's kind of interesting that uh, I didn't start playing soccer until I was about 14 or 15 in, in uh, high school at Islip High School, uh, where I mentioned that I was from. And I really, the only reason why I started was because to play uh, uh, my sport was basketball and I wanted that opportunity to uh, 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 get in shape for bas- basketball. So that's how I got, got into get, uh, soccer, uh, purely. And uh, I was very, very lucky. Uh, uh, in one of our games in uh, in, in school, they, the the goal the starting goalkeeper had a really bad game, and on our in an important game, and on the way home, uh, the coach came up to me and asked me, "Hey, Alan, would you like to play in goal for the next game?" And uh, it, was, it was a playoff game, actually. And it was like, "Whoa!" Uh, you know, I said, "You know, I've, I've always been the type of guy who." Uh, when the coach asks you to do something, it's you know you just do it, and whatever they tell you to do, you do. And so I said, yeah, I'll play. And uh, that was a, my, my sophomore year in high school, and then I've been there ever since. Uh, went to, as I mentioned, went to uh, James Madison and uh, played down there uh, as a goalkeeper, and uh, uh, loved it. And from James Madison University, 
graduated in 74 and then it was on to professional soccer. I played uh, 18 seasons uh, all, all throughout the United States, starting in uh, with the Baltimore Comets. It's kind of ironic that I started my career with uh, Baltimore Comets uh -huh. uh, in 74 and in 89 I ended my uh, uh, career with the team the Kansas City Comets. So. A lot of other teams in between, a lot of other nickname teams in between, but uh, those are the ones I started and ended with. Yeah. I understand you were the uh, team MVP at James Madison, and you set several records in your career and season shutouts. Yeah, they, uh, it was it was it was great. You know, the first year we were down there, they they just were start. You know, it was just started the the program like a year before we got down there, and uh, it took a lot of rebuilding and. Uh, the first year we we didn't do so well. We did a lot, a little bit more recruiting. I got a few more players there, and then for the next three years we were rocking and rolling, and uh, it was good, you know. And I I attribute a lot of the success that we have down there to the fact that we did have some good teammates and an outstanding coach uh, Robert Vanderwalker who believed in me. You know, if 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 a coach believes in a player, the player plays I think a whole lot better, and that's one of the things I really really learned at, at an earlier time that. Uh, uh, it's nice to have the your, your coach your your, co your coach has your back when when you when he when you feel that he actually does believe in you, and uh, he really taught me the correct way on, on how to play the game and how to approach it both uh, on and off the field. Well, tell us about getting drafted in your first year of professional mm -hmm. soccer. The excitement of being on a professional team. Well, there's uh, that's a good question, Matt, and and and. Uh, I've I've always since I was a little boy I've always said to myself I wanted to be a professional athlete and I didn't care what it was going to be it could be basketball football baseball or whatever uh, or it could be tiddling weeks it could be anything and I thought the idea of getting paid to play a sport is just an absolute a thrill of a life and that was my dream growing up and I didn't I, you know as I say I. I didn't know uh, what what sport or or, or anything that would ha if it happened, but that was my dream. So I took and uh, when I went to college, I didn't think of it. You know, I, I sort of lost it. You know, like I didn't know. I didn't think it was even possible. Uh, then my senior year, uh, out of the, uh, you know, we're playing in, in tournament things and we, we're finishing up, and I, out of the blue, I get a call from the coach from the uh, Baltimore Comets at the time, a fellow named Doug Miller, and he was a, the head coach there, and he said. Uh, uh, Alan, we have a, a draft, and I didn't even know. I didn't. I didn't know that there was a soccer draft. Okay, I was pretty naive at that time. I didn't know much about professional soccer. I didn't know who the players were, the Pele's of the world, that sort of deal. I didn't know any of those. And uh, so he says, uh, "We're having a draft next week. If uh, if we draft you, would you be uh, interested in coming to to Baltimore, uh, Baltimore and play for us?" And it was like, you know, I it was like, what, you know, it was like I couldn't. Digest. I said, well, what, what, "What did he really? What did he ask?" And I said, "Of course I would. I, I'd love to play." And uh, uh, and uh, a week later, uh, I get another phone. It wasn't like it's on TV or new big news deal or anything. We get another call from it that says, "We've just drafted you, uh, number one. And uh, we drafted you uh, in the first round, okay. uh, number four over, overall." And uh, uh, you report. Can you report to uh, for a press conference uh, next Wednesday? Uh, and that was it. That was it. That's how I found out about it. Uh, it was out of the blue, and it was it was really cool. And was, of course, I said yes. I'll be right there. You know, it could be. Can you can you get here? It was a three hour drive, and it was you know, can you be here in three hours? And I could easily you know made that trip. But it, it was it was a great. It was a like a, a, a lifetime dream come true. Uh, and the fact that oh now you know I have an opportunity to play for something and. Uh, uh, it certainly wasn't for the money at that time, uh, you know. Unlike nowadays, it was not at the money. I, I was a first-round draft dra draft choice, and uh, they gave me a, a whopping uh, contract. Uh, you know, uh, it was it was fifty dollars. It was it was uh, it was it wasn't even like a, a salary. It was fifty dollars a game that you played in, wow. and yeah. uh, and uh, uh, and what else? And and they and a quarter of an apartment. So that was it, and it turned out that I ended up playing. Uh, um, so I ended up like making like uh, 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 like eighteen hundred dollars for the first year, and uh, more or less ended up paying to, to ended up paying to play, you know. But uh, uh, 
I, I wouldn't change it for anything. It was a great, great experience. Uh, so it uh, uh, it was it was just a thrill to get. It, you know what? It was a thrill. It was a thrill about someone you'd think about someone who wants you to play on their team. And I've always remembered to this day that, you know, I never knew that I would play 18 seasons. It was like, okay, wouldn't it be great to be drafted by a team? That was what I thought. And then the second thing was, wouldn't it be great if you could play, say you, you could play for one year? Because that means that somebody wanted you. You must have played good enough or well enough to, to, uh, for them to offer you another contract. So number my first goal was to get drafted. The second year was to be able to get your next contract because that meant that you played pretty well. Then after that, who knows? It could be, it, you know, career could be over in history. But those were the two things I wanted to get done: drafted and sign another contract to make it uh, where you were able to. Uh, they they, they like what they saw, so you were able to sign on. Mm-hmm. Well, tell us about your playing experience and your favorite cities. Uh, and your least favorite cities mm-hmm. to play in, and play in a Kemper Arena too. Oh wow! Well, it all you know started back. Uh, it's really almost the career was divided almost into two different areas. Uh, when I first started, it was more or less outdoor soccer, uh, where it was in the NASL, North American Soccer League, uh, and uh, that was when they uh, when first uh, after a few years of playing in a, a, a fellow named Pele came in to the league. And he was the world, uh, could be still today, you know, depending upon who you speak to, they're the greatest players ever played the game. Well, uh, when he came into the league, the league exploded uh, with the New York Cosmos. Um, and they had quite quite the team at the time. With uh, You could go on and on with the players that they had at the time. They were all uh, world-class players and just well, well-known uh, at the time. So uh, soccer was uh, where... It was nothing in the beginning when I first started. It, 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 uh, the uh, outdoor game started getting bigger and bigger, and you talk about different places you play in. And, uh, you know, there was great venues in, uh, you know, uh, Tampa Bay, San Jose, New York. Uh, and Kansas City had a team in the old NASL, Kansas City Spurs. Mm-hmm. That was a little bit about b- before my time. Like, they, they were uh, in the er- early 70s, I believe. So I missed out on that. Although I, although I did end up playing against some of the players that played for, uh, for uh, on the team, and uh, uh, the the, uh, the 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 popularity game, they just thought was going you know it's going to explode, and it got bigger and bigger because of the Cosmos uh, brought in, and uh, as you say, some some uh, some really nice venues to play into, uh, and. Uh, there were some not not nice place place to play in, and one of them was uh, Portland, uh, oh. which was a and that was because they just started having astroturf at the time, because at the time everything was grass, and now now a lot of things are astroturf, but it's nice astroturf now. There, it was astroturf was just a regular carpet on top of like a cement uh, cement uh, uh, flooring, and uh, it was a rock hard, and as a goalkeeper, you're diving around, and I, and every single time I played there, I ended up getting a, you know, getting injured through you know a hit pointer or a bad, uh, uh, your knees or your your, your hips or you know, or elbows were were hurt from diving on on there. So that was not the nice place. If we fast forward a little bit, because you mentioned Kemper Arena, we fast forward uh, after nine seasons of outdoor, going into the indoor uh, arena. Uh, and indoor, uh, uh, out, outdoor took off for, for my first nine years, and then the indoor game came to, to fruition. And the indoor game just absolutely uh, 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 just took off big time. As the, uh, the outdoor game was declining, the indoor game, uh, this is probably the uh, late, uh, late 70s, early 80s, where the uh, the outdoor game declining in the early ga- and the indoor game was in uh, was was stepping up big time and one of the factors was the comets the comets uh, you know they didn't start off in Kansas City they were uh, I believe they were in uh, might have been in Detroit first and then they went to San uh, uh, San Francisco and then here I believe that might be the way it went and uh, ended up here at the Kansas City and uh, the, the team took off. 
Uh, and when I say took off, I mean it went from it went from like really nothing to big big time. Uh, uh, soccer here in Kansas City was uh, as well received as any other place in the United States. Uh, and in, in, in most cases, uh, it was almost the model franchise in the early, in the early 80s. Uh, we're, we were selling out Kemp Arena uh, on a, uh, and not, uh, not a daily basis, but because you didn't, we didn't play daily, but on a, every time we played, uh, I think there was some statistic out there that I can remember that when I first heard it, it absolutely blew, blew my mind, and that was, uh, out of the winter sports, out of basketball, winter uh, uh, hockey, and and uh, indoor soccer at the time, uh, we we let uh, there was only uh, I think the Boston Celtics had a better average, better uh, average than, or higher average uh, than the Comets did. Uh, out of, and you're talking all the NBA, all the NHL, and it was only because uh, they were they had a bigger uh, venue than we did here at, at Kemper. So it was a, uh, uh, in the beginning, it was just wonderful. Uh, I, uh, I was playing with a different team the first two years that they were here, and then I came along in, the, uh, uh, in, in 1985, I believe, 85, 86, and uh, just, uh, it was just, you know, so playing in front of sold out crowds all the time, because the, the big thing was that the, the fans in Kansas City were, uh, Basically, in my opinion, they were like blue-collar, hard-worker people, and they really appreciated uh, the players, the way they played the game. Now, in the beginning, the Comets weren't, uh, 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 they, they weren't the great, greatest team in the world, but one thing for sure that they did was they always hustled and always tried and always gave a, a big, big effort when they played. And uh, that we knew from a, an opposing player when we, we came to, when I uh, was playing for other teams, the San Diego Soccers, et cetera, and coming into the uh, Kemper, it was a, always a great place to play because they supported, the fans supported their team, win, lose, or draw, and uh, uh, the fan player uh, respect was as, as high as any team uh, that I have ever seen and still have ever seen. What electrifying crowds, you know, the hot winter nights, and the, yes. the lights and the sound, and the crowd was just electrifying to see that and playing that probably really uh, supercharged the, the players. Oh, absolutely. And, and you, you say supercharged the players, but the first few years that I, uh, that we played at Kemper, I was, uh, I was an opponent and, <laughs> and I came in and it was, it was supercharging. You mentioned super, it was supercharging for us as opponents to come in. You always looked forward to these games because you knew uh, it was a great, great atmosphere to play in. Win, lose, or draw, you knew that uh, the fans were going to be there. You knew that they were going to be cheering their team on. You know, they, they did not like the other teams coming in. And, and that's good. That, as a player, I, you respect that tremendously. Uh, and, uh, but it was, a, uh, it was a, a great atmosphere, not only during the game, but before they'd had the little party type uh, deals going before the game. And then also, after the game, they always had some, uh, you know, nice get-together for the players and for the fans to, to big old big rooms that they can get together and, and just uh, socialize. And uh, so it was a it was well done uh, early on. Well, tell us uh, what you prefer and why uh, indoor or outdoor soccer as a goalie. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a, that's another good question. And I, uh, uh, as I mentioned, I played professional outdoor. Uh, soccer's goalkeeper for nine years, including playing for the United States national team, the World Cup team. And then my final nine years of playing, uh, or uh, season-wise, I played indoor. So I, I played nine and nine, so I'm probably a pretty good judge on this. And I've always said that uh, uh, I, I really like the outdoor game, because uh, that's the game I first played with. I really, really like the outdoor game, but I absolutely love the indoor game. And that is simply because, as a goalkeeper, you have you're in the action all the time. And I was always I was always the type of player that really wanted action and was enjoyed the you know being overworked if that's possible. And in indoor, it is very very possible to be overworked. Uh, 
So uh, where outdoor, you'd, you'd, you'd come up and make one or two good saves, maybe have six or seven the whole, the, the whole day, maybe get 10 shots against you. Well, in indoor soccer, we were getting, you know, uh, 75, uh, 75 shots against you. You'd end up with 35 saves, and uh, it was constantly uh, a barrage of shots at you. And uh, uh, I liked it for a number of reasons. Uh, or the, big, the biggest reason was I liked the, the, the work, and the, I think you, you, you play a little bit better when you're, 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 you're sharp, you stay sharp the whole game, because if you, if you take a few seconds off, you know, you, you're going to – they're going to score uh, one more multiple goals on you without any problem. Uh, but I also like the fact that you know uh, that you could you could be playing in a game and you could make mistakes in indoor, and uh, they they wouldn't be as critical because you'd have a such a uh, uh, you know if you let in one goal, and I always I always figure that indoor soccer a goalkeeper generally will you know he, maybe he'll be fault, faulted for directly for one goal. Uh, you still have a great chance of even being a player of the game and winning the game without any problem. But in outdoor, if you let up that one goal, there's a good chance that you could be the goat, and you could be the uh, uh, the reason why your just team just won uh, or lost one nothing. So I really enjoyed the. Uh, uh, I, I didn't feel as much pressure as, as far as playing indoor is concerned, and uh, it just it it was just a uh, uh, just a wonderful. Uh, Felix, because it was a deal where you could uh, you you felt you, you you played a major part in the game. Uh, if you went to, if, as I say, if you went to, uh, relaxed or anything for, you know, literally, you know, t- ten or twenty seconds, they're they're down at you again. So, which means that if you're if you're not concentrating, you know, there's a good chance you're letting a goal. Uh, balls are shot at you a, a lot harder in indoor. Uh, I don't know if it's a wind resistance or, or non-wind resistance or whatever. It, it's uh, they're, they're they're generally about three, anywhere between three three feet and three yards uh, to to ten feet away. They can go up to thirty. You know, outdoor you say a lot more shots from distance shots, but indoor is a lot qu- quicker. The uh, speed of the balls. You any estimate? Yeah. Well, yeah, they they used to have uh, they they used to have uh, uh, an All Star games and things. They used to uh, have kickers, uh, you know, like as part of the All Star uh, entertainment. They'd have a radar gun out there, and players were kicking it in the high seventies, okay. uh, and uh, you know, low eighties. And I, 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 as a goalkeeper, I used to always think they could get it like a hundred miles an hour or something okay. because that. But if you think about it, someone kicking that ball. Uh, high 70s uh, and the size of the ball and when it hits you it's gonna it's it's gonna it's gonna hurt and some of guys could really 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 hit it hard uh, and uh, I mean we had some guys on our team with uh, with the Comets who you know uh, you know uh, uh, Kim Rumvent, uh he could he could he, he played against him several times when he was with with Wichita with the Comets I mean just uh, played with him with the Comets and uh, you know, he had his nickname was a rocket, and the reason why the rocket was because when he, the ball left his foot, it was like a rocket, and it just took off. And uh, uh, so it, it's been, you know, it, it, you have to watch out for some of those guys who had those real, real hard shots. Uh, but that, that was, you know, part of the game, and uh, it was, it was, it was an enjoyable time. I really, really enjoyed my time in, here in Kansas City. Uh, uh, not only on the field but off the field, we did a lot of a lot of uh, clinics here. I remember doing one one year here because uh, I kept track. I did in in 365 days. I did like 350 clinics my uh, first year or two that uh, that I was here. So that was almost a clinic a day, and that was number one because the fans, you know, they, they, it was. You know, we had a market where we could we could go out and, and you know uh, there were a lot of people interested in seeing the players, and uh, we went to schools. Uh, we did a lot of uh, works in, in schools, both at the younger schools and the uh, junior high schools, and we talked. We, uh, we went to uh, showed them how to play and uh, talked about uh, 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 dare the dare program with drugs and alcohol, and it was just a. Uh, the reception that we got from the, the public was 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 wonderful. Um, they they uh, and to this day, 
uh, you know, we can go out to uh, a restaurant or something and people still remember the, the, the old comets. There was something about, there's something magic about them that they, they, uh, uh, they, they remember going to the games, they remember going to, with the smoke there and the Midnight Express uh, song that was coming out. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was just, it, 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 it's really does my heart good when I can talk to an old Comet person who'd been there, like yourself, and they, uh, they, they, everybody has warm memories of it. You know, they, they remember having, they remember going good times. Uh, when, uh, uh, you know, they remember it as, as a kid when growing up. Uh, they remember it as a parent taking their child to the, to the game. And uh, I don't know if people just being nice to me and stuff like that, but I really haven't had anybody really come up and say, "Oh, they, the games were terrible. It was really, really a bad deal." It's always it's always been a very positive uh, situation, and and uh, as a player, that that's that's it's it's great. It's it's really nice to know that you're appreciated as a player uh, the way you can play. But even uh, even even uh, to me, even more important is you know if people come up to us to. Uh, and you know they, they thank you for an autograph or they thank you for coming to see me in the hospital and you know a lot of times you don't remember doing that but they remember it yeah. and uh you you, you really could play and it's absolutely wonderful because you can play you can play a good positive uh uh make make a difference for in, in kids in, in the younger kids lives and the comics were good at it it wasn't just one or two players they, they had the entire team where were were outstanding at it, uh, and uh, they they just went out in the in, in the in the in the public and just uh, did a, did a lot of a uh, lot of the players uh, live here right now. Okay. I mean, you could you could go through a list of uh, you know starting with Gino Gino uh, you know Mr. Comet. I mean, he's he's been he was he had a you know tremendous. He's played more games than anybody as a Comet and a uh, wonderful guy and just a, a great. Uh, PR guy. Who's your favorite comments to play with? I mean, uh, they're making yeah. coaches too. Yeah, uh, to play with, uh, I'd have to say um, that. Oh, that's a t that's a tough question. That now you now we're talking because we're talking <laughs> we're talking about what are we talking about? Thirty years ago, uh, I'd have to say I uh, the ones that I do remember. Uh, um, some of them are, are very very good players. I mean, you know, like a Goosens, uh, Dale Mitchell. Uh, they were very, very good uh, uh, players. They, they scored a lot of goals, really good uh, players, good teammates. Uh, and then uh, those are probably two of the, the, the better, you know, the offensive guys. And I enjoyed playing with a guy named Kia. Kia was a, a, a smaller guy up front for us, and, you know, he, he worked like crazy. Uh, Tasso Kasukis was a, a good player here. Uh, Demir Harmini. Uh, you had... Uh, uh, as far as in in the in the middle or the back uh, that that I really liked, I really liked playing with Kim and, uh, Kim Runvent, who was a you know you can do he's, he's my opinion could be the, the best indoor player uh, overall player all star 15, 16, 17 years whatever uh, we had uh, uh, of course Gino in the back. Gino was a bulldog back there. His nickname was the Bull, basically. Uh -huh. To this day, I still call him Bull, and that is because you know uh, people love Gino because he 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 had good he had he was a decent player. I mean, he was a good player, you know, good skills and things. But he had a heart of uh, of a, a tiger, man, of a bull. He he would go he 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 left everything on the on the field, and as a goalkeeper, nobody came in. If someone came in to hit me late or something. I knew, I knew it was just a matter of time out of the corner. I, you know, Gino's going to be there, so I could come up and I could, you know, I could, I could end, if I ended up in a fight or something, I knew right to, the, I know, I know he was going to be there. So he he was a, a you know a favorite. Uh, Charlie Ficus still lives in town now. Uh, he he was fun to play with. Uh, Timmy Clark. Uh, so we had a, a a bunch of good players that that stayed here. The, and that uh, I really enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed playing. Uh, Enzo De Pede is still in town, and he and I were goalkeepers together, and uh, uh, that was good because he was a he, he was a, a really good guy. And matter of fact, he and between he and I, we played more games than, than any of the any of the uh, the goalkeepers. Uh, maybe he 
games he and I played probably would would almost take almost uh, half of whatever he, you know you know like if you added his games up and my games up we'd probably have played what everybody else had played so we, we, were, we were out there quite a bit uh, and uh, uh, another another uh, good one is a uh, that we used to have that played here that some of the uh, people may remember is uh, Dave Doyle. Uh, he, he was a, a, a very, very good player. Uh, so there, there was a lot of them, a lot of great players. Uh, and uh, they've probably went through th probably 300 to 250, 300 players in the time. And, uh, um, and to be, to be considered one of the players, you know, that they, uh, uh, they were able to, to, to play that long with them is, is quite an honor and, and I, I take it a very, very serious time. Mm -hmm. I love uh, sports nicknames. I understand yeah. you had a nickname too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kamikaze? Yes. You yeah. about how you got that? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, well, that, that came about uh, uh, in the, uh, probably in the middle of my career and it just came about because I, I was very, very aggressive and uh, didn't didn't really care about my body or, or health or anything. If I saw a ball, I would go go get it. Uh, goalkeepers are known for being a little bit uh, crazy, a little bit different. Well, I shouldn't say crazy. Yeah, crazy is a word. Different. You know, they're men mentally they're 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 built a little differently from the the uh, other players in the field. And uh, so you know, you you think the term kamikaze. You're thinking about you know the you know the the airplane pilots where they just you know they have no re regard and they're just ready they just go and and uh, and do their job and you know if it matter if it's you know you don't, you do it to death you do it to death so uh, that's the way I, I used to I, I approach my my my, uh, my games and 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 my, and my career I would I would I took it serious and I played hard so people used to you know nickname me kamikaze and and uh, and uh, it was, I, I'm not sure if it was flattering or not because, uh, but uh, it, you know, it did, it did really say the, the style of my game. And then when I was here in Kansas City, uh, we went ahead and uh, I was able to purchase like 50, 50 season tickets. And I had every game, I had kids come out, un, uh, underprivileged kids, uh, uh, boys clubs, girls clubs, uh, uh, and I used to uh, just you know bring them in a game and I gave them all a shirt, and uh, we called them the Kamikaze Kids. Okay. So yeah. so we had a big uh, section in, in Kemper, 50, uh, 50 kids always came uh, to every game, um, and uh, that was that was that was fun. Uh, you know, that was that was a, a good time. We got to meet a lot of nice people through different uh, different uh, nonprofit events. Uh, and uh, it was all for the kids, and the kids uh, used to go up there uh, during, you know, like before before a game, or uh, and just you know chat with them and stuff. And they all we all gave them all t-shirts, so it was it was it was quite it was, it was nice. Yeah, it was good. Well, uh, can you tell us about any specific comments game or series of games that you are most proud of of your contributions to the team? You know that. Um, that's a tough question after thirty something years, and I, 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 I remember more towards playing wise. I can remember uh, specific uh, games where, you know, it, it had to be a dramatic deal where, uh, like a, a John Bain in overtime against Minnesota, uh, scored with a, a two seconds or so to go, and we won five four. And the place was went crazy. Uh, I can remember a few of those type games. The, the, to be honest with you, the more the, the, the thing that I remember more about uh, my career uh, with the Comets are are more uh, towards the fans and and what's happened off the field. Uh, uh, more towards a uh, you know going to the schools and doing doing the. Uh, 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 clinics and 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 talking to the kids because the kids really they, they looked they looked up to you and they really uh, uh, they, they took it as a big deal and it was kind of nice to go over and be able to make a uh, an impression 
uh, with the kids. And if I was to say I was going to miss some th some things from playing, that's probably what I, I miss more than anything else, being able to make that difference in a kid's life. And just the fact that you played with the Comets, you didn't have to be a good player, in it, but just the fact that you played, you know, that, that had instant credibility for them. And, you know, they... they they would listen to you know they'd listen to you what you what you say and stuff, and if you ever gave them individual attention, it was even better. Uh, so I miss that probably, uh, or I, if you think about some of the things you did on on the field, probably more uh, it, it's it's all what you did off the field. You know, going into ho hospitals and talking to the kids. To this day, I still get letters that you know, uh, you know, you, you went to see my brother, and it meant the world and to to him. I mean, even to this day. Uh, uh, and it, 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 that you know that that makes that makes a uh, uh, makes a professional career really worth it. Uh, so, but I do remember, I mean, one incident. You know, this is a uh, in pregame warmups. Uh, uh, you know, you have your shooting drills. And I remember Gino taking a shot, and he met, he was put it up top, and it went flying up and hit this little girl in the face. And uh, you know she was down, and it was down, and and uh, I was always the type that before a game was, I mean during the game it was like it was I was concentrating on the game, and so I remember seeing that poor girl, and I said, oh no, that's that's a shame, and I saw Gino grab a ball and run up and give it to her, okay, so uh, that was done, and then 20, 25, 30 years later, I I'm, I go up to uh, I went in the insurance business. And I go up to uh, to to talk to uh, uh, one of the people who worked for a company called Lockton in town, and she was saying that she loved the comets, and she was like a producer there, and she loved the comets, and she said that, uh, oh, it was great. You know, one time we were warm ups, and this ball comes up and hits me, and Gina Shirley came up and gave me a ball, and I can remember. I said, oh my God, that I remember that day. If it's what uh, because. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was the first time I ever seen a player get a ball and, and grow, go up. Now they th throw balls up, no, yeah. uh, no problem. But at that time, and he he went up and gave the girl the ball. And 30 years later, I was doing business with her in the insurance business. Wow. And wow. Yeah. and we were in we were great friends in the uh, in the insurance business because of, you know, things that happened on the. So I do remember that, um, and uh, just, um, I, I, you know, I. I Going on road trips with the players and and basically playing games and and uh, you know doing fun things at the at the airport, uh, you know playing pranks on people and uh, just just all fun little things. Uh -huh. Yeah, some uh, athletes have superstitions they follow throughout Ooh. sports. Did you have Ooh. any superstitions that you <laughs> followed? I don't know. Uh, I would. That's, I wish my wife could come here, come down, and and answer that for you. Uh, the that is a great question because I was m probably the most superstitious person that that was was out there. I mean, and the first thing that I can do it now, I, I'm fine now. But the first thing I did uh, with my all my superstitions was I never talked about them. Some people ask me about them, and I say I, I have them, but I don't talk to them. So my number one superstition was never talk about your superstition. <laughs> how, how crazy that! I told you the goalkeepers are kind of weird and and. Uh, Crazy. So that was my biggest one. Other than that, um, and after that, I had them all. I had all kinds, and I mean, it. it the superstitions uh, ran all the way to, to uh, Saint Parking and Saint Parking uh, 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 space every game. Uh, not not only every game. I took it to every practice. I'd be in the same practice. Uh, I ate the same thing uh, every every game. Uh, four hours before a game was. Uh, I had uh, lasagna. Stouffer's lasagna. Uh, I slept. I went to bed like at one o'clock and got up at three o'clock. Um, I would go ahead and I would go ahead and, and take a, a, a twenty minute walk around the around my block. Just a, a one 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 way around. It took twenty minutes. Uh, always went with the same players to the game. Uh, Dave Bonchek, Kevin Hundult. They would come in and they'd pick me up, and we would we would go we we would drive out. Uh, uh, when when you get to the locker room, I, I had my tape taped in a certain place so so that and uh, so that I could just you know pull it off. Uh, I always put on the sh uh, you know sh sh you know shoes uh, 
sock on before the uh, one, one side to the other. Uh, I would only take, you know, a certain like five shots, uh, five handling. It went, the list went on and on and on. And I'm, it, it almost got to be scary where uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, if, if I saw a, a penny on the ground uh, and, and it was a, uh, uh, wasn't heads up, it was like, oh my God, it was, I, was in big, I was in big trouble that time. Yeah, yeah. So it was just different things. And I would say I probably had a, a overall about 100 of them. Uh -huh. And uh, they kept growing and growing. So one of the things was when I finished playing soccer, it was great because then I, all my superstitions were gone. Thank goodness. Because it was, <laughs> it was starting to drive you crazy where you, 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 you had to almost do the same thing. And I was so ready. Before a game, uh, I didn't talk to people. Uh, you know, one of my things was I, I didn't talk to any any anybody from the other team. Uh, if someone came, I would never shake anybody's hand because it was a, you know, I didn't want to get friendly with him because I wanted to, you know, really go, you know, kick his butt that uh, that day. Uh, and nowadays it's so much, you know, you go up, you know, you go and shake a person's hand, you, you talk to the person before the game, blah, blah, blah. But I could never do that. Uh, and... Uh, I, I never talked to a, a reporter before a game because I didn't want to you know, have that be jinxed out. Uh, or I wouldn't go to talk to a reporter before, tel I would never go on television before the game because uh, I felt, um, and so it was just different different little things like that. that uh, um, but yes, I did have, I probably had a hundred, hundred um, superstitions that, that, that probably um, throughout the course of the yeah. time. Well, and, you but you know what? I think that, I don't mean to interrupt. But I think superstitions are good in a way because it's 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 almost it was a uh, a routine. So we, we we had a routine down, you know. Uh, and this is what I do the all the way up. You're I, successful in doing it. Yes, exactly. So it worked. It worked for me. And I, I always envied the guy uh, like like a guy uh, who played who played here, Jimmy Nielsen. He was a goalkeeper for uh, Sporting last year. And Jimmy could talk to anybody before a game. He could just be friends, and, and I always, you know, I, 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 I uh, and he was very, very successful at it. You know, he had a good, a good time when he was playing, uh, and I envied him for that in that in that respect because I couldn't, I, I couldn't do that. So it was just, it's just, just I guess every player is different. Mm -hmm. I understand your number zero was retired by the Comets franchise. What? Yeah. Incredible experience. Yeah. Can you tell us about that experience. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, that it was. It was. It, it was. It was incredible because I think we touched on the fact that um, we, we mentioned earlier about there have been about 200, 300 players who have actually played for the Comets. So to be able to say that your number is uh, up up in the rafters, uh, retired for forever, basically with only with one other player, which was Gino. Uh, is 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 a great honor because there's so many great players who have come come through this franchise uh, that are very deserving and hopefully someday we'll, they'll get up there too because what it is is that it's a it's a it, it what it means to me is you you did you you, you did the right things the right way for, for a pretty long time uh, so and and it's saying that. Um, Thank you, you know, owners, players, fans for appreciating what you did as a player, both on and off the field. Uh, and so it is, you know, when I, when I go to the games now, the comments and look up there and see it, it's, it really brings a, a, a warm feeling to me knowing that uh, uh, you made a difference, that, 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 that uh, you actually, you had to perform well uh, to uh, to be even considered for it, uh, and for the comments to think uh, highly enough of you to say, "Hey, we'll, we'll put your number and name up there." That's it, it, it's a it's a great great honor. Um, and that night that they had when they put it on was a, was a very happy happy moment. Uh, you know, it's it's almost a, uh, the end of your 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 career. And what else is there? To, I mean, the fact that they they honor you for the fact that what you've done on the field, and not not only on the field but off the field too. So it was a, it was a wonderful honor. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your uh, MISL All Star appearance with the Kansas City Comets in I think '86. It was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a. Uh, it, that was the one that was here. 
here was that here in Kansas City? Yeah, uh, there's one here in Kansas City. I played in I, I played in a few of them, and uh, uh, one of them that was here that when we played in Kansas City, the one that they uh, uh, that actually played here at Kemper, they sold the place out, and our team, which was the West, uh, won the won the game. And Kim Rumford hit a game in overtime. So the Comets team, I mean, the Comets, it was the Comets, the Soccers, the, forget all the other teams that were playing on, 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 the, on for the West team. Well, our team, Wichita was one of them because uh, Kim. So our team won the, won the game. It was like, uh, I don't know, 5-4, 6-5 or something. It was in overtime. And it was a wonderful game. Uh, uh it was probably the best all-star game that was played uh, that, that meant something like uh, that was the dramatic. Uh, uh, so uh, the fact that they, we, they could, we could win it in front of the Kansas City fans uh, at Kemper uh, was a, uh, the fans went crazy, absolutely crazy. And we meet a lot of people to this day who says, you know, they, they, they were at that game and, uh, uh, it was a it, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful experience. It's it's great to be, uh, you know, voted onto the All Star team and then to play in a uh, highly uh, uh, competitive game and to come out on top of it in front of the you know the best fans in the league. We're like, whoa, this is nice. Yeah. Now tell us about your experience with the uh, men's uh, national team. Uh, I understand you had a couple of shutouts as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, that was that. Yeah. That was. It was a, a, a wonderful experience. Again, it, it, it just being uh, uh, nominated or thought of to be a national team player because uh, national team wasn't as as big as it is now. I mean, now it's huge. I mean, we went through the World Cup this past year and things, and it was it, it's absolutely huge. And it's it was a, a great honor to, 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 to be on the team and this was in the mid seventies and the team was uh, the team was okay we didn't we actually didn't we uh, we, we played at all the, qual- the qualifying games to get into the, the World Cup so uh, it was a it was my really my first time on big time uh, experiences in 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 how. The, the the world take how the world uh, envision, envision soccer, uh, playing for the team and going to places in Mexico and South America, etc. Uh, playing in packed stadiums and playing in in stadiums where uh, uh, it's it's really like a religion to, to to most of these people in other countries. It meant everything. Uh, we went to I remember going to Haiti, and uh, we played. They had a stadium there that fit twelve thousand people. And it was twelve thousand people for our practice. We came in and just did a practice game, and it was because my my feelings because the stadium it was at night, so the stadium lights were on, so it's probably like you know telling everybody around that there's something happening in the stadium. So everybody came to the stadium to to watch practice and uh, uh, to be able to represent your country is a, is a wonderful wonderful honor and I can remember some uh, playing you know playing and and people yeah uh, you know that's when they started the, the chant you know USA 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 uh, and that's like whoa this is this is bigger than what, what I know because it's always been whether you play for uh, San Diego whether you're playing for uh, Kansas City or whatever you're playing for your local team so and your and your fans there are great and but here, when you're playing for the national team, people in Seattle are cheering for you. People in Miami are cheering. For people people in New York are cheering for you. They all want you to do well because uh, you absolutely represent the country. You're not representing an individual team or an individual city. Uh, so that's kind of eye opener, and it's like a you know a wow a wow factor in that respect. Uh, and we had uh, several several wonderful experiences with the national team. Uh, uh, and it was just uh, we, could, we could go over and over on some stories on, yeah. on you know, uh, both on the field and you know off the field with machine guns and you know how how people really take this game serious. Well, beyond the Kansas City comments, uh, I understand you have experience 
with the, uh, the Kansas City Wizards, uh, yep. Sporting KC, and you know, right. Casey, can you tell us about your experience beyond the Comets in the Kansas City oh, area? Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, uh, when I when I retired from the, the Comets uh, back in late a, a, in 89, uh, I went into the insurance business for 23 years, and we've come back in into uh, uh, my first few years when I was uh, retired, was Wiz came, the Wiz came here, uh, uh, probably, uh, they came here like eight, 1995 in that area. Uh, and I was the goalkeeper coach for them with Ron Newman. Uh, he came in and I did that on a part-time basis with Ron Newman and Bob Gansler for four or five years. They were the Wiz and the Wizards uh, with, with for, for four or five years. Uh, and then I retired from, uh, from the insurance business and went in. Uh, have, I'm now the goalkeeper coach for uh, the Comets, my old soccer team, which we won the championship last year, the indoor championship. Uh, UMKC, uh, I'm their goalkeeper coach, uh, the men's team. And coincidentally, it's uh, the coach that brought me to Kansas City is Rick Ben Ben. He's the coach with the UMKC. Uh, great guy, just a great friend of ours. And uh, with the uh, so we coach there, and most recently for the last year I've been coaching with the uh, sporting uh, Kansas City Sporting Academy teams. Okay. So the, these are all the teams that are eventually, hopefully, players are, are you know uh, aspiring to, to become sporting play, uh, Kansas City Sporting players. They have the teams that are under uh, 12, under 14, under 16, and under 18 teams. Uh, they have a lot of the best players uh, of the in, in, in the in the Kansas City and surrounding areas, and I handle the goalkeepers for all those teams. So I really have the best of both worlds, where I'm I'm, I'm dealing with professional players, I'm dealing with high uh, college players, and then I'm dealing with the youth from 12 to 18 on the uh, uh, with with Sporting Academy, and they've all been uh, been wonderful, and just you know, and, and just absolutely enjoy it. It's you know back to the, my my love of the game and being able to to do what you really like to do. Very well, lucky. Yeah. Where do you draw your inspiration from? Uh Wow. Uh, I th I think we I think we we have to talk two different things here. Um, one is like when I was playing, and one when you're not playing, and. Um, when I'm not playing now for the last 30 years the inspiration comes through the family totally from the family from my wife and kids and now my grandson so uh, that's where all your inspiration on you know why you get up in the morning and why you go out and do things uh, and uh, when I was playing it was drawn I don't know whether this is the right answer but this is a uh, I don't know if it's an inspiration thing, but it was a fact that I love to compete, absolutely love to compete. And the thing is that um, I hate, absolutely hated uh, losing when I played. So my inspiration, if, if this is, uh, my inspiration would be uh, the, 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 fear of, the fear of failing probably. So I hated to lose. So probably the, the fear of, of, the, of the losing uh, motivated me and, and inspired me to play play as, as well as I want as well as I can. Once I finished playing, you know that, that fear of losing was, you know, went away obviously, and, and all the inspiration now comes from the family. Mm -hmm. Well, to kind of wrap this up, is there any other mm -hmm. uh, Kansas City sports history moments or thoughts that you have for the, the group? Um, well, I'm, I'm just honored to be to be. Um, Thought of as one of the players of the of the the group, uh, one of the one, one of the members of the the the, uh, the history group. Um, I I really love the in part. I mean, we do a lot of work uh, uh, with with the chiefs, uh, for some of the older older guys with ambassadors and uh, golf tournaments, and and when we used to play a lot of basketball with the the royal guys, uh, and so there's a lot of Overlapping on, on different charity events that we when we go to that you get to see uh, some of the older uh, uh, some of the older chiefs some of the older uh, uh, royals and even the uh, back in, in with the uh, with the basketball team that they had mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, with Scotty Wedman yeah, playing in, the, the old Kings, uh, JC, uh, you know, when he was he was playing there. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's I, I feel like it's a big fraternity of